Hello, this is Jared playing Oxygen Not Included. In the last episode, we melted the walls of this particular rocket. Made sure not to uh, remove either the gas input and output and liquid input and output. And with that, we're able to build stuff out in here. So I put some liquid in here, some water or salt water, and that has... Uh, turned to steam had a little bit of a cooling effect so what I'm doing now just waiting for that steam to drain out just a little bit we'll get some dupes in here and I'd like to construct a steam turbine can't do that because I don't have plastic though right about uh, right about there well on the plastic situation that is a resource that I want for multiple things including this particular project and I noticed I had a glossy dricklet egg that came from right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go enable this again with critter eggs. We're going to select Drecklet and Glossy Drecklet eggs and have them sent right here. I'm going to patch this back up and we're going to run the incubator. Running the incubator on this Glossy Drecklet egg. That's going to increase the rate at which that'll hatch. And we'll get a glossy dricklet, which we're going to put in this stable right here. With the shearing station, we should get some nice plastic from that. We completed a milestone in our research, getting the radiation refinement. And that is thanks to the new virtual planetarium that's on base. I'm just realizing that's actually not in a laboratory, so we'll make sure that any future re research is done in a proper laboratory. I believe these betas have been eating away at uranium ore and actually smashed out my vacuum area, which was acting as temperature protection. So we're going to go in here and repair this. Just noticing it's kind of funny that all the pips decided to congregate in this little area here. The dupes were able to make quick work of adding insulation back, preventing all this coldness from going into our uh, base here. Just double checking that everything is still vacuum. And we got a couple pips down there, but we've got so many I think we can spare a few. Second time running the glossy egg through an incubator. So we've got two little caches of liquid, very cold. So what we're doing is pumping that out to this warmer liquid to cool this area down. This is going to be salt water I'm going to eventually use with the desalinator to send in here for storage of liquid water, which is so important. Another time running the incubator with the Draco egg. Glossy Draco egg. Carving out a spot for pinch of pepper plants. Various layers here, here, and down along here. Eventually this cool slush geyser is going to start outputting liquid. Last episode I put through this system here to essentially push half the liquid or half the pipes with liquid that's going to actually take the coolness of the cool slush geyser and put it into this block. And then I'll have the ability to have my base cooling line go in here whenever cooling is needed to take that out. The second part of this whole setup is even after going through this, this may warm the polluted water, but it's not guaranteed to get it above freezing. So after it goes out over here and visits this area, this is going to be a spot with a liquid temperizer. It's, it'll finally be bringing the temperature up. So when I when I eventually put it through these water sieves again, they're not going to break in pipes. The other thing I've got going on, we're starting to put some ice, brine ice, and snow. I don't think there is any, but uh, yeah, certainly any forms of ice will go here. Even more incubation. Try to encourage that egg to hatch even quicker I decided why not put some cuddle pip eggs and see if they'll have a look at these eggs the only thing is I've got a lot of regular Draco eggs but uh, we'll see what happens in order for this liquid tempidizer to work it's gonna need some liquid 
So dumping some salt water in there that uh, is from down here. Always notice it's a little strange how a piece of gas can actually prevent liquid. I, I assume if I throw enough, it's eventually going to squash this carbon dioxide up and out of the way. Watching this pip plant the last piece of sleet weed I've got planned. I've got over 150. That's going to be enough. Oh! <laughs> pip! I... Let's, uh... Actually, I probably will get them to move it over just... So that when I bring in automation later on. <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're almost there with that. We're going to get the pips to start to plant some pinch of pep. Uh, pip. Oh, my goodness. I can't talk tonight. Uh, pinch of pepper plants up here. Transferring some pinch of pepper net seeds over to the other world for pip planting over there. Decided not to pump the rest of the salt water. Why not just dump salt water that's above into this zone, any excess is going to make its way down here. This is the first time using the teleporter in quite a while. Don't see reason for having as many dupes over in this world. Since I'm nearly complete my goal, I've got sleet wheat and we'll be at a pinch of pepper plants pretty soon. Yes, I did name one of my dupes paint. <laughs> there you uh, a pr future artist. Starting to get some pinch of pepper plants starting to grow wild on this world thanks to these pips. I see a glossy drecklet. So we're gonna wrangle them from this room. I had to temporarily remove these tiles. Just make sure we get over there. And then they're gonna be dropped off here. And this is gonna be the first drocky, uh, glossy drecklet in this particular stable, which is awesome. Beaker is the one to grab the glossy drecklets. We're gonna be dropping them off here. When they become an adult, they're gonna make their way to the shearing station and I'll get my first piece of plastic. We've got a line of pincher pepper plants. We're gonna to need to warm them up. Some of them are happy, but some of them are not. So moving the pips over here, they're gonna start the process from this way over like that to get even more. Been transporting the brine from this guy here over here and that's starting to fill up. I'm a little bit worried that's going to spill over up into my base. But uh, this area is actually looking pretty green. This is brine I could easily process at this temperature as long as I had the infrastructure set up for it. Let's just have a quick look at the overall temperature of the entire base. It's looking pretty decent. I haven't really done much in terms of temperature management, at least not yet, in, this, in the core base area. So, kind of been taking care of itself. Its insulation obviously has been essential not to freeze out the base, and even the insulation over here to prevent the hotness from getting in. Let's just have a quick look at the base over here temperature wise also pretty green a little cool down here but that's not really the living area and again no temperature management apart from the insulation i started this mechatronic line right here and it's just bringing ice and brine ice around in a loop to help melt it a little bit quicker that should uh, cool this area off a little bit can already see some splashes do that otherwise it would have taken much longer for that ice to melt away I placed a sweetle with a sleet wheat that's gonna give a little bit of a bonus to some of the plants at least the ones that they tend such as this one here what's it give 5% growth speed dumping some water on top of the pinch of pepper plants so I can eventually warm them up over here and make sure clear this for the next pip. Hey, hey, our first piece of plastic has been made here. 150 kilograms. Not sure if that's enough for a steam turbine. No, but uh, there will be more. Second glossy drucklet egg. Applying the lullaby effect to get the second glossy drucklet 
available to us. Disassembly my glass forge. By one, make some more glass. So I'll find a new location for it. Also, changing the circuitry. Going to be extending heavy watt wires all the way over here because I've got more heavy duty machinery, including desalinators here that are going to consume a lot more power. No need to be on the heavy watt wire system. My plan is to do a little bit of refactoring. I don't like the fact that I've got this heavy watt wire stretched out so much. So I'm going to compress that, but that's another day. For now, I'll just bring it over and make sure these desalinators can work. Warmed up some of these plants. They're happily growing now. Might as well finish off the little bit of insulation. I don't need to heat up the whole base. just want to heat up the actual plant area. So get insulation around all of them. I now have three Drecklet eggs. Glossy Drecklet eggs. So we're going to go and incubate each of them in turn. Thanks to this auto sweeper. They're taking the process one way. So that mop can just concentrate on new eggs. So we can go through all three of these. And they'll get the lullaby effect. And if this cuddle pip agrees, they'll also get the cuddled bonus as well. The desalinators are online. This is the first desalination process of this colony. So salt water or, and or brine is going in. Just to make sure that uh, polluted water is not there. It's going through some water sieves and being pushed out here. Just realizing I should ideally make it change slightly like this. That's just going to allow this guy here to consume and force it out into the base at a prior, higher priority than in storage. Now that I'm expecting plastic pretty soon, we're putting in a new system here. I'm going to start with a spot for the steam turbine. We're going to add in some other components around this rocket as well. We have some sleet wheat ready for harvest. It's not actually set to harvest because it's wild plant. We'll probably have this this way the whole time. For the time being, I'm going to harvest sleet wheat. And here's one of the first harvests of sleet wheat. Of course, we don't want this sleet wheat to go bad. It's out in the oxygen. So I've indicated to the dupes, I'd very much like you to put this into uh, this fridge. In which case, uh, this autoloader takes it a higher priority and stores it in a deep freeze. So we'll have tons and tons of sleet wheat in time. Here's the dupes moving that sleet wheat so it makes its way to the deep freezer. So we get a spot here for a steam turbine. And I'm going to have a second steam turbine. That's over here. And this one's going to be a permanent one. That's going to actually keep the rocket itself cool for the long term. It's also going to have the job of cooling off this steam turbine itself so it doesn't get too hot as it operates. and tries to bring the temperature down because everything is still very, very hot inside this rocket. And I don't want that when I let the dupes in without Atmos suits. Watching the dupes empty the desalinator, and I forgot there is a manual process associated with this. So just put some automated lights for the dupes to be able to see next time. Got some mealwood that's not happy. And that's not good because I definitely want to feed this glossy Dreco. So we're bringing in pipeline with radiant pipes right here. I'm going to tie that into this cooling line that I was using to keep uh, the machinery up here cool when I melted the side of this rocket. But that means I'm going to have to actively make sure this line itself stays cool. Initially, we've got a lot of coldness at the bottom of the base, so that really shouldn't be a big problem. We'll be able to just essentially dunk it down into this zone. But uh, at some point, this guy's going to come alive. Actually, how many cycles? Uh, 3.8 cycles. Awesome, we'll be able to see this thing go live. And transfer coolness from this to act the actual cool line that's going around the base. I planned my pinch of pepper plants wrong again. 
I knew that it wasn't four. I had assumed I couldn't do a distance of six, but the actual distance is eight. So I'm just going to have to drop these tiles down. Do the same thing over here. Get the pips over and we'll start planting here again. With this uh, cooling line going around, it didn't take long before the mule would start it growing again. I'm breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief as I see this pip is happy with the distance. Oh right, this is tile three. So it's a distance of five from this particular plant. But anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to allow me to do a second row of these pinch up pepper plants. Well, exciting news. I've got enough plastic to make my first steam turbine. I'm going to place that right there. It's also cycle 175. I think I'm done for today, but we've done very well. Did a little bit of construction around the outside of this rocket. Generated some plastic to create the first steam turbine. And the idea with that is I'm going to cool off these tiles using this uh, steam turbine. And I'm going to have a second steam turbine once I have enough plastic to make sure this guy itself is staying cool as it's operating. Over on this base, been attending to some glossy Drecos. And Draco eggs. So just got a stable size one, but we've got three eggs. And I'm sure more is going to be on the way. Doing temperature management here so that these meal would grow. I'm going to switch over to uh, Bristleberry. But I'm going to wait for more of these guys because this is the only critter that can actually consume Bristleberry. Or amongst the Dracos. These Dracos don't. But that'll be later on once, they, uh, once their stable becomes full. We've got desalinators running. That's taking brine slash salt water from here. And it's actually decent temperature. And the reason for that is I've been throwing the excess brine from this guy over there. Also at the same time, we've been running some ice through here. That's generated some water. But it's also cooled down this zone here. At the same time, taking this salt water over to this world and what big accomplishment is done here we should mention we've got massive amounts of sleet wheat every one of these rows has uh one or two sweetles except for maybe you know the, the top small ones but oh uh, and we've been starting to plant the first pinch of peppernut uh plants let me just clear away for pip to continue on there We've been heating up this zone so these wild plants actually will grow. And we're going to continue that pattern over here. And we'll have lots of material for pepper bread once all this is live. We've actually even harvested the first piece of sleet wheat. So once we harvest the first piece of pinch of pepper plant, we can actually probably start generating some pepper bread after that. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, I will see you in the next episode where I'll continue on. Wasn't super exciting this particular episode, given the last episode actually melted the side of the rockets. But now that I'm going to be getting more plastic, I think things will be getting much more interesting. Well, until then, thanks anyone for liking, watching, and subscribing, and I will see you next time.